Power to the Truth. This is Margot, and it's Sunday, August 26, 2018. And this is going to be a sea ice update in the Arctic, along with a climate cast for the whole world. And we're going to look at all the different levels over at CAMS and just cover everything. It's been about a week, a little over a week, since my last climate cast. And just before we get started, I'd like to thank everyone who showed up at Campfire Chats and participated, and especially the ones who called in and spoke. And um, we had some new people talk this time, and we got some really good information and insights from these different people. And um, so I hope you enjoyed the show last Thursday, and if you didn't get a chance to hear it yet, go back to the archives on my YouTube channel and check out Campfire Chats with Margot from this last Thursday. And um, I'm going to have these every two weeks. So the next Campfire Chat will be on Thursday, September the 6th. So that's the plan. So we're going to just start right off with Arctic sea ice. Here is the picture from Climate Reanalyzer from today, Sunday, August 26th. And I'm going to go back in the slideshow. I've been saving these pictures every day so that I could have my own collection and see what was going on and from year to year if we're here that long but and to compare back from where we were like a month ago or last week or wherever we want to go back to so we can see that this darker area means that the ice is thinning along up here and around the edges more and we can also see I'm going to blow this up and when you get to NASA Worldview, we'll be able to see this, although it's quite cloud covered in the last few days. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on in this north end of Greenland. But that's been the hot topic this week. And I reported on that <coughs> earlier this week. And um, in the campfire chats, we did an Arctic ice update. And we can still see that there is um, open water there's uh, and areas that are not covered with ice still here in northern Greenland and they're not out of the woods just because it's refreezing doesn't mean we're out of the woods because this this whole area above Greenland and these Canadian islands, this archipelago and different, th this is the, called the Queen Elizabeth Islands. That's what housed the oldest sea ice and the thickest sea ice. And as that's deteriorating and melting, there are going to be huge problems in the future because you know, we're, we're, we'll be at the end of the melt season in about a month and wherever we end up then the ice will start refreezing for the winter but with such such thin ice it means that there's less ice building up for the next thaw which will be next next spring it'll start thawing out again and we've seen how rapid it has thawed and melted and how rapid we've lost this all these areas of this very thick well you know four and five meter thick sea ice we've pretty much lost that that's gone that's down to two meters at the most according to the Navy website that I use and I default to that I don't use a whole bunch of other ice modeling systems because they're all different and they all measure things differently and I'm um, I don't care to get into a debate on any of this 
This is the model that I use, and from my research, this seems to be the model that is the most accurate according to other things that are happening in the weather. And the Navy has a great interest in knowing what's going on in the Arctic and, and ac accurately knowing the level, the thickness of the ice, where it is, and this and that because they have alliances made with other northern countries here to develop the Arctic area and to have commerce coming through. And if you didn't see my video on, on that, it's called uh, the U.S. and other countries. Um, as the sea ice melts, the U.S. and other countries continue to um, I can't remember the name of the title right now, but it's a few videos back, but the Navy has a whole plan of opening up the Arctic, and I went over that. They have a road map to the Arctic, and they've already got the routes all figured out, and there was an article that just came out this week that um, there's going to be the first um, commerce ship come through the Bering Strait and come through right along here. They're going to have to go through this very thin ice, but you know, they're equipped for it. And then then come up and I'm not sure where it is. I'd have to get the article. Uh, but that's for another show. And they're going, they're coming, I think to St. Petersburg, Russia. So you can see that the coastlines are clear over here. All of the Russian coastlines are clear. And that's what China and Russia and some of these other countries in the north that are that have been waiting for for this ice to melt and open up. And even though they only have a three week period right now, what happens is in the years to come, these ice-free periods will become longer and longer because there will be less ice in the Arctic to melt. And so with every melt season, every year, it melts down further so that there's less and less and less ice until finally there will be no ice. And then we're in big trouble. Well, we're in big trouble already, but... <clears throat> if we're still here by then. So, just to look back over the last few days, we can see where we came from. So here's today, so I'm going to go backwards in, in my slideshow for you here. Here we are today. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to click backwards and we can, you can see the difference, how the the difference of the melting is and the thinning and you know it does move this is a mobile area I mean the ice is just floating around on the ocean there and so depending on how the ocean goes and um, how strong the winds are the ice is moving it's not just stuck in one place it is it is moving So here you can see on the 19th where there was a lot more open water above Greenland. So part of that has started refreezing, but they're still in big trouble. And so that's back to Thursday, August the 16th. So that's probably enough to show on that. So now we're going to get on with our report. Here is Climate Reanalyzer, and I will leave the links to all of these websites in the description below so that you can look and do your own research. And here's this, this uh, North America view. So we're just going to click around the world and just look at this from a different viewpoint. And this is the snow and ice cover. And you can see from this um, the Russia viewpoint, you can see 
like there's no ice along the coast there's no reason that ships can't go through there according to the people who have 3600 containers that they want to bring on a big ship through there's no reason they shouldn't be able to do that because you know this is this is area that had been frozen over but now it's ice free so they're going to take advantage of that and here's the Antarctic and apparently they're having trouble with their sea ice down there we can see it's quite thin over here this is the East Antarctic this is the West Antarctic it's quite thin there and broken up and um, I don't know how well it really formed this year it went out around um, that the extent they like the extent of it but I'm thinking it was quite thin and we can see that when we go over to the Navy website as well now I'm gonna kind of go backwards here the sea surface temperature is always good to look at but we really don't know exactly what we're looking at as far as is this normal or not unless we go into sea surface temperature anomaly you know unless you've been studying this stuff you wouldn't know that 15 degrees Celsius is a very high reading in the Arctic region in the ocean you wouldn't know that we wouldn't know that because most of us don't study those things so we have a little cheat sheet here called the sea surface temperature anomaly and so what we're seeing is in in the white that's no anomaly that's about the temperature that it that it average averages out to be over a, a certain year period that's considered to be normal and then when you see it go down into the blue that's where it's colder than normal and so we actually see a little cold area up here um, off the East Siberia ice shelf but um, there's no ice there there's no ice there so um, so but the water is colder there than it normally is and and then when you go up into the browns this is two degrees Celsius normal warmer than normal and then the dark brown is dark 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 brown leading into red is four degrees Celsius warmer than normal and so and then you go up to and through the red and all that and this is important because there are lots of nuclear reactors that are sitting on the coastlines and that depend on the colder water to cool them down and we talked about that in the show on Thursday and I presented an article about how with the abrupt climate change and the global warming how they're just not going to be able to keep the reactors cool because the water if there is water it's not going to be cold enough to cool down the reactors so it's not just are we going to have a nice free arctic there are lots of other things going on that could kill us so and we can see it's very very warm up here in this right off the coastline of all of almost all of Russia just this little part right over here but it's brown so it's still warmer right on the coast so it's brown but um, and then here at the Bering Strait where it comes in so so we'll just click around the world here's a hot spot up in the North Pacific so you can see waves of where the sea surface temperature is much warmer than it should be 
and this is causing problems on all fronts. It's causing, uh, well, methane is coming up in places that people did not expect it. We can see it's much higher off the coast of South America there. And we can see that some areas around Antarctic, Antarctica, that the sea surface temperature is much warmer than it should be. And I did present that Sam Carana article that talked about um, these different ways of measuring. And he was saying that, the, that you needed to measure the air, sur you needed to go on air surface air temperature above the water too because that's always warmer than the sea surface and the, the the temperature of the land is hotter than the temperature of the air that's above it so you know it's a whole science so here's the average temperature at two meters above the earth today and we can see that the Arctic is starting to cool down. Doesn't mean that we're, that we're done with melting. It just means it's slowing a little bit. It's cooling down with the average, but the maximum we still have maximum temperatures in the daytime, or and it's still daytime up there, but in their hottest, their warmest time during the day is above freezing it's i can't really tell what that reading is it's probably between five and eight degrees celsius all in the arctic and all around the coastlines it's even warmer it's that dark green so that's probably around nine degrees celsius and then it's much warmer in where this atlantic ocean water is coming in and so as it comes in it's coming up under that ice and it's melting the ice from below so that's why we're still seeing melting of the ice even though on top it looks like the ice should be freezing it's melting from below and we've talked about this now let's look at our two meter temperature anomaly and we can see that on our climate reanalyzer, we have huge areas up here in the Arctic that are above normal. Even this this big area going straight across from Greenland over to Russia, it's above normal. And then we have much higher than normal temperatures, like 10, 10 and above Celsius here. as part of the East Siberia ice shelf. And so what that means is there's going to be methane being released. It allows for methane to be released in larger quantities. Here's Africa. It's much warmer down here in the bottom part. And they're still in their winter time down there. It's much warmer across this upper part of Africa. People have been dying of heat stroke and workers, farm workers are dying because they can't be out in the heat. Um, you know, there are droughts everywhere. It's, and this is the end of summer. Well, coming towards the, I guess the middle part, towards the later part of summer. Summer doesn't end until September. But um, this is, and we've got a big, big heating up area all the way through this area and up in Russia. Norway is looking better. India is looking better, but China has got areas that are hotter than normal and then going up into Russia and the Asian countries here. South America. Now this is an interesting pattern. 
I don't know what this means exactly, but we've got this interesting pattern of warmer down on the south part and colder up here in this middle part. So that's probably because of the the southern jet stream is messed up. Just just my thought. And then here's the southern view and Australia is looking better but it's still warmer on the southwest and southern part and New Zealand is still warmer and in the Antarctic we've got a part now to orient ourselves this is um, this is the western Antarctic this is eastern Antarctic so this is north and this is south and so we have an area off the southern part of Antarctica that's much higher than normal and so I'm thinking that's going to be affecting their sea ice down there and we have um, warmer than normal coming up here off of the Ross Ross uh, Sea here and into Antarctica and then over here on the western side as well so that's these warmer temperatures are definitely affecting their sea ice I would think but then we have areas that are colder than normal so it's hard to say and the ozone hole over the Antarctic I'm going to show you that today while we're in cams it's getting bigger and the ozone is thinning even more it's the lowest I've seen it since I've started looking at it so we're going to be looking at that as well so um, you want to look at precipitation now and we can see the green is rain and the blue is snow and so over the Arctic here we've got uh, quite a bit of rain coming in and so the rain will f will melt the ice and just a, a you know light snow in some areas of the Arctic but it's overcast it's quite cloudy there's no clouds over here it doesn't look like and that's the Beaufort Sea where that's all melted I haven't really been following all the hurricanes and everything I'm I can't do everything you know I know people want me to track everything but I really it's too much especially with watching the the sea ice I know that um, the hurricane uh, for Hawaii was not as bad as they thought so that's good so we're going to leave climate reanalyzer now and we're going to go over to um, National Snow and Ice Data Center. We haven't been here in a week or so. And Arctic Sea Ice News and Analysis. And here's the sea ice extent. And this is how far out the ice is in the Arctic. This is not concentration or how thick it is. This is how far out they're counting any any frozen stuff. Here's the sea ice concentration and I'll get a bigger view here. We can see that the concentration is quite low because as it gets into the darker blues it means it's not as concentrated that means it's not as packed together it's more broken up and more slushy 
and more able to be just broken apart in a cyclone or a big storm or anything like that. Here's the chart for Arctic sea ice extent. Comparatively, and the dotted line is for 2012 because that was the, the lowest it's been as far as sea ice extent. And they're about, I guess that's about August 15th. That's what it looks like. And so we're still lower than those other years up here, but we're not as low as August 2012 according to this chart. Here's the Antarctic. Now you can see that their sea ice extent looks pretty good. It's actually gone out beyond the edges on part of it on um, what their median is. But it's and so it it evens out with the areas where it doesn't come out as far. So I think they're pretty happy with the extent so far this winter down there. But here's the concentration and we can see on this eastern side right here it's not very concentrated and all, also on this western side on this tip here it's not very concentrated. And here's the charts for the Antarctic, the sea ice extent and we can see the blue is for this year 2017 was last year and last year was the lowest it looks like on sea ice extent so we're we're right around even with where it was last year on sea ice extent in the Antarctic and now we're going to look at the Navy website we're going to look at the Arctic at the sea ice thickness and we can see that it's still quite thin in the Arctic it's still mostly purple with some blue and then a little bit of aqua coming in here which is the thicker sea ice so that's where we are as of today on the navy navy sea ice thickness and the purple is between 0 and 1 kilometer 1 kilometer I mean 1 meter I'm sorry I'm not very with it today I'm fasting and so this is my third day on my fast and so I'm a little bit fuzzy because I'm releasing a lot of toxins and I'm not feeling real well but um, this is something I, I need to do and so but the show goes on and then as you get up into above the one meter sea ice uh, reading it's in the blue area so these are about one meter and then in this dark blue green it's one and a half meter so we have an area here like this one and a half meter and then it's getting into the thicker and then the aqua color is about two meters and we have we're, we're seeing that form coming back a little bit here on the edges so if you want to look at their 30-day animation that started back three weeks ago and it goes into a seven-day forecast period from today this is it's showing still uh, it's still declining even though this ice is starting to come back a little bit here in the Canadian region and North Greenland it's still retreating on all the other edges and it's still growing thinner so we're still losing ice we're still in the melt season so we're not 
things are not good. It's not a happy picture. Here's the sea ice concentration according to the Navy's chart. And you can see for yourself that the concentration is really coming down. It's falling apart. Here's the speed and drift so that you can see like where the ice is going to be moving and maybe coming apart. This is where we're at right now. And the sea surface temperature. It's really easy to see it on this view. This is the temperature over here in Celsius. So you can see that most of the Arctic, their sea surface temperature is above zero. The, sur the sea surface, not where it's ice, but where the water is. It's a lot, and it's all on the edges there. Almost all around all the edges where it's really coming in. So we can still expect melting to happen. This one is sea surface salinity. And so this is a good tool when you're trying to figure out what temperature this the ice is going to be freezing at because fresh water freezes at a low, lower temperature than, no, at a higher temperature than, than salt water. So fresh water will freeze at a higher temperature. So that's why we're seeing this refreezing more up here above Greenland. Now actually, this is, this is more in the saline See, we can see the saline mixture coming in. So, over here in this Beaufort Gyre is more of the fresh water and down here at this bottom area because it's getting down into the blues and purples. And from what I read, that the older sea ice is less saline because when it freezes, it like spits the, the salt water out or something like that. So with the older sea ice, but we don't have much old sea ice. So we have a little bit down here that's more fresh water. But that could be from rivers coming down from Canada too. So it's hard to know there. And I told you we would look at the Antarctic now at their sea ice thickness. Yeah, this is this is not very thick at all. This is a lot less than last time, I think, from what I recall. Of course, it's thicker over here. This is where we have the Larsen ice shelves over here off of the north northern part there, northwest part. But it's quite thin over on this east side and then it's quite thin on the west side as well. So let's just look at the sea ice thickness in the Antarctic for the 30 days. Well, it's still growing, so a 
Okay, now we're going to go to NASA Worldview and take a brief look at the sea ice in the Arctic today. This is from yesterday. I don't believe, yeah, we don't have all the data in yet from today and especially the area that we're wanting to look at down here on Greenland. That data is not in yet. But we can look at what we've got where it's not clouds. And as I showed you, oh, yeah, there's, see, there's quite a, this is land down here where we don't have data to. Um, So where there are clouds, then now we can see like on this northern part of Greenland, that's cloud covered. So if we zoom in, we're not going to get be able to get a good view of what kind of sea ice is there or how far off it's gone or anything like that. Now here are these little patches where the cloud is not and we can't really tell what's going on just from those little patches. We need a bigger area and that's one reason it's so hard to really get a handle of what's going on in the Arctic with the sea ice from day to day because there's so much cloud cover And, you know, we don't know if the clouds are thick or thin or, you know, what's going on. We did see rain, I believe, in Climate Reanalyzer. <coughs> rain over here, so there's your rain. <coughs> And that temperature is warm to 76.1 Kelvin. That's above freezing. I believe it's 273 point something is freezing for fresh water. And 271.5 is freezing for salt water. So we've got some colder areas here. So let's zoom in at the sea ice here where it's not, not cloud covered. And we can see it's broken. It's quite broken. And we can see the cracks coming down and coming down. There are cracks here that we can see. And that's at 87 degrees north latitude. And here are more cracks. So you have to get areas where there's not cloud cover to really kind of get a, get a snapshot of what's going on. So here's, that's at 87.93. So that's getting very close to the North Pole where you're seeing it so cracked up. So let's look at this edge here. I'm always curious to look at edges. So yeah, those are cracks. And holes, cracks and holes in the ice. And so forth. And we can look on this western edge of the ice and see what we can see here. Here's, here is a cloud-free zone. You can see that. Uh, 
And this is the ice edge on the western side there. Looks like lace. And now we're coming into clouds. And we can see, we can discern the ice through the clouds here. It's still broken up and thinning. And that's what the Navy website showed us, that it's still retreating. Let's see. That's about all we're going to get from today. So let's look at yesterday at the NASA World View. Okay, we've got a huge area on this western side that we can look at. And it looks like we can look at some of Greenland. Some of the northern part of Greenland. And these tributaries down here, the Baffin Bay. And a little bit of the northern part here. So let's start with this Cape Morris Jessup, which has been the item of interest. Here it is. Th right here is where they're talking about. Now you can see that's cloud covered there. And it's clouds over here. So here we can see here's the ice edge from the coast and it looks like some remelting going on. But we can still see chunks of ice. And there's some cloud cover we're looking through. So here's the ice over here. And here's this huge open area. Here's cloud cover here. You can tell when you're coming into a cloud where it gets fuzzy like that. That's a cloud. And then here's the sea ice that we can see. And it's broken up over here. So there's that. That's at eighty four degrees north latitude. This is all around eighty four. This is yeah. These are all eighty four. So let's look at where else we can zoom in. Let's look over here on the east side. What this ice is doing. Well, it's deteriorating. You can see the cracks. I wouldn't walk on that. I definitely would not walk on that. Let's look here. Well, that looks more solid than I've seen. But I see cracks in there too. Here's some... Here's some melting. Looks like. Yep. look here. 
Here's some holes. This is at 87. Where you see it getting dark like that, that's where melting is. And it's you're and you don't have clouds. Now as you get closer into the North Pole, it just is not as clear of a view for whatever reason. Let's look over here. Okay, this area is dark. We're probably seeing the color of the ocean through that is what probably what we're seeing. So we can look now. Let's just see what we can see even through the clouds down here. We can see through the clouds that the ice is still quite a ways off from the coast there. But it is, we, we're having some refreeze, but it's not very thick. Now this is this wispy stuff, this kind of gray stuff is clouds. And we can see the ice chunks and the water through the clouds there. So this is that older ice. This is the shape it's in now. Now we're looking through clouds. Very broken up. That's clouds there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But where it's thin, you can still see stuff. Where the clouds are just a thin cloud cover, you can still see the holes and the cracks. Here it's cloud free. That's at 80.80 degrees north latitude and 108.24 degrees west. Can't really see the edge very well. Oh, look at all this broken up area having to look through some clouds, but we can see this is all very broken. That's that, this is that western edge. So, there's that. And I'm also interested in looking at earthquakes and relating earthquakes with sulfur dioxide and things going on on CAMS. So I put in on USGS all the earthquakes from the last 30 days worldwide that were 4.5 magnitude and higher. And here's what we have. 
we have 499 earthquakes on the map. This is 4.5 magnitude and higher. So they're all around these plates. These red lines are the plate lines. They're all around these plate lines. As you can see, the majority of them are. Except for those going off up here in northern Alaska, it's not on a plate line. So, we had we've had a lot of I consider these large earthquakes 5.4 in New Caledonia that just happened We're, we've got earthquakes in Indonesia Papua New Guinea Russia Th oh these ones in Russia they're over here on this little island right here Kirill Kirillsk, Russia there have been quite a few over there. There was a 6.0 in Iran. Javanrud, 26 kilometers southwest of Javanrud, Iran, right there. That was yesterday. But of what I wanted to show you, this Peru earthquake, the 7.1 Peru earthquake that happened. Here it is, this big blue dot on the map. It happened on August the 24th at 9.04 UTC time. And it was 609 kilometers deep. That was so deep. That was so deep. I mean. So I've got cams pulled up. And I want to look at sulfur dioxide. And I have something interesting to show you. Our data goes back to the 22nd. So that earthquake was on the 24th. And what I want you to see is over here. You see that over here on the left that Vanuatu um, had an explosion. That and we had another. We had a had something go off over here on Indonesia today. But um, we'll look at that in a second. But what I'm wanting to show everyone is that I believe there is a relationship between the release of sudden release of sulfur dioxide and then an, a big earthquake that, that's going to happen because it moves the plates and the release of sulfur dioxide can be from a volcanic release or from earthquakes but usually when I see it pop up like that and it's not a forest fire or something. It's usually volcano. So that here is Vanuatu at 3 o'clock and um, you, that's UTC time on August the 24th And then if we get our earthquake maps back up, that earthquake in Peru happened on August the 24th at 9.04 UTC time. So I think there's a relationship there. And I think that 
we can use the sulfur dioxide releasing just showing us that that's a precursor of earthquakes that are going to be happening and other geologic activities around the world and then it goes on and then it, this is so interesting what happened in Indonesia this morning actually yeah it was the 25th it was yesterday I'm saying today but it was yesterday and it was here in Indonesia and it's huge and look at the ripples of sulfur dioxide going out it's like it's sending ripples out they're lower levels but you can see the ripples so I don't know if that was an, a volcano or what I really haven't checked what what happened I was doing other stuff yesterday so anytime that happens then it shows that there's geologic activity going on and so don't be surprised at more and more earthquakes because the earthquakes and the volcanoes and the release of sulfur dioxide and ground level ozone if it's not in a populated area can also be precursors of earthquakes so I just wanted to show you that on cams and now while we're on cams I want to show the ozone over the Antarctic now this is measured in Dobson units our data goes back through Wednesday <clears throat> to today through today and then so it's all data I believe here's our scale down here these are Dobson units is how the ozone is measured so we're looking down at the Antarctic here's here's the eastern side here's the western side and we can see that the hole is quite large this aqua colored this 220 Dobson units is covers up most of the Antarctic and then we get this kind of purpley color that's 200 Dobson units so that's going down I don't know what this black line is around the the purple I've not seen that before but we have something new showing up here and it's this blue color which is this blue color down here in the chart and that's 175 Dobson units so that's even thinner that's the thinnest I've seen so I don't know what this black line is I really don't have a clue I don't think it's no ozone because normally it goes from the aqua to the purple so I don't know why it would be no ozone but you know maybe I'll email cams and see if they can answer that for me but we can see that this purple area the 200 Dobson units has grown and during during our period here it, it fills up most of the Antarctic with a little bit of the 175 of the lower here's 175 up there where where it was now they are in the middle of winter so it's going to be low in the winter time and then it comes back in the summer when they get start getting sunshine 
I looked on the NASA website and the lowest they registered it ever was 92 Dobson units. That was in the, in the middle of the winter. 92. So now let's look at methane. We're going to switch gears here. Well, while we're on ozone, let's go back to ozone. Well, let's go to ozone over to the Arctic. And I want to show you the thinning ozone over the Arctic as well, because that's happening. And it could be because it's getting colder there. And I know the ozone hole switches from the South Pole to the North Pole when we sw change seasons because it gets colder and less sunlight. So that could be what's happening. You know, this is my first time to track all of this. So we're all learning here. We're on this journey all together. Now most of the Arctic is in, well, a lot of it's in this green in this this area closer to the North Pole here. Okay, here we go. A lot of it's in that chartreuse green, which is two sixty Dobson units, and then the bluer green is two forty Dobson units. So we're seeing a lot of 260 and 240, and then it goes, and then it gets, goes into the higher, higher readings into 280 and 300. And we can see it building here. So that's good. We we need a better ozone layer total column. This is total column. But I don't know if part of that is from the wildfires building up ozone. Um let's go back to world view here. And let's run total column ozone. And then we'll look at surface level ozone and we can see very high levels of surface level ozone where the wildfires are. Okay, we still have thinning around the equator. Thinning here is not as thin as I've seen it. It's more up into the 240 Dobson units rather than 220 here over Indonesia and Papua New Guinea in that area. And then it gets into the chartreuse which is 260 and that's for the rest of the mid latitudes. And it looks like the northern hemisphere, the ozone layer is thicker this week for total column. It's up into 280 and 300, and some of it is in 320s. But I'm thinking some of this total column ozone can be part of the ground level ozone readings that are coming through from the wildfires. So you know, it's it's ozone. And this total column ozone is what filters out the ultraviolet rays from the sun and um, keeps you from getting sunburned.
so if you have a very thin ozone layer you're going to be in trouble if you're out in the sun too much so now let's go to surface ozone and run this and this is measured in parts per billion and we're seeing quite high readings this is up here in British Columbia where those wildfires are just raging raging the reason you see it go away at certain times is that it doesn't show up in the in at night the reading normally doesn't show up at night so it's in the daytime where you, where you're going to see the ground surface ozone levels Now it started over. Now watch up here. There's British Columbia. Let's pause that. This was back on the 22nd. It's uh, covering a very wide region. And then here's North America where the wildfires in California are burning in that area. And then we're looking over here at China and Asia. They have high ground level ozone because of the pollution. The sunlight comes through and interacts with the pollution and creates ground level ozone that is quite dangerous to breathe in. And there we are in British Columbia again and so forth. So let's look at methane now and we'll wrap this up. This turned into kind of a long climate cast because there's a lot to look at with the Arctic right now. I mean I could have done a whole show just on the Arctic Now this defaults to total column and so even in total column these readings are quite high at um, this yellowy green is 1820 parts per billion total column right over the North Pole and then you can see it gets higher as you go away from the North Pole and here's some very high total column readings up to 2300 it looks like over here in China and then over here where those wildfires are it looks like so let's go to surface level level and we're gonna look at the methane around the North Pole, around the Arctic. And our data is for three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then after that it goes into a forecast. So our baseline is from Wednesday. 
So we're going to load this movie. So time is short. It's getting shorter by the day. And the world is seeing the effects of all of these changes in the atmosphere with the flooding and the fires, the storms. We're seeing the effects. It's not normal anymore and it never will be. It will never be normal again. We're in no man's land and now we're heading into times where we just we don't have a clue what's going to happen. Well this is the worst I've seen methane. This is the worst. Okay. I want to pause it here look at this oh, I meant to pause it look at this this is the actual data this is from Friday look at this all over this eastern side of the Arctic and here it is here's Norway and Finland and Sweden look at this black area this is all black coming up from Russia and Russia here look and over here this is where those wildfires are that's all black so methane is definitely being released in the Arctic now so it depends on how fast it comes up and what areas and how fast it's released as to what happens. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. We just know it's not good. Okay, let's look at the global methane now. We'll wrap it up. We're going to skip carbon dioxide this week, I think. Well, we can look at it if you want, but um, this is this defaults to your total column methane. So this is going all the way up through the atmosphere. This is the reading. The light. 1880 to 1900 to 2300, 2320 total column. So let's go back to surface and start this movie. I'm not very perky today, so, <clears throat> you know, fasting will make you tired. I have enough energy for what I need to do, but anyway, just getting a bunch of toxins out.
So there you have it. Our climate cast from this week. And it looks like New Zealand has quite a bit of methane popping up again on your coast. And it looks like we're getting methane coming up from the Antarctic. It's um it's a darker green. I don't know if it's just swirling around or coming up. Well, this is surface level, so it's probably coming up. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off. My name's Margo. My website is margoshealingcorner.com. Time is short. I suggest you get your spiritual houses in order because I don't think we have much time at all. Until next time, go in peace, God bless, and goodbye.